But in the studio, we're joined now by Henning, Henning Meyer. He's the head of the European program at the Global Policy Institute here in London. Now, Henning Meyer, you are yourself German. Now, you were only 11 when the Berlin Wall fell. But still, this must be a very emotional day for you. Well, it is. I mean, it's commemorating one of the uh, biggest, well, the biggest event in recent German history and uh, was really the starting point for the Germany that um, you're experiencing or everybody can experience now. As you rightly said, Angela Merkel, now 20 years after the fall of the Berlin Wall, we have a chancellor that was born in Eastern Germany. That's one um, of the symbols and one of the signs that really show how the development of the last 20 years uh, really went quite far. Just uh, cross back now uh, to Berlin. Again, some of the speeches have begun. Now, as well as Angela Merkel, who's expected to speak, the Chancellor of Germany, we're also expecting uh, to hear from the mayor of Berlin. Um, so we will be watching um, the live pictures coming out of Berlin. Let's go back to our guest, Henning Meyer. Henning, as I was mentioning, you were just 11 when the war came down, so I presume you don't really remember a divided Germany. But as you were growing up, could you still feel a distinction between East and West Germany and East Germans and West Germans? Well, you know, when I was growing up, you, can, you had relatives who had further relatives in, uh, in Eastern Germany and you had the sort of every family knew the stories that you sent parcels for Christmas and uh, these kind of things because of the very limited range of products um, uh, Eastern Germans were able to buy. But um, as sort of post the fall of the Berlin Wall and post unification 11 months later, you could really see uh, that a process started that really made Germany grow much together. And in my generation, to be honest, it's not much of a distinction whether you're from the east or from the west. So how united is Germany now, do you think? Well, I mean, it depends on what you look at. I mean, obviously there's still uh, some economic problems uh, in, in many respects. The eastern lender are not quite up yet to, uh, to the economic uh, power of the western. It's meant to be another sort of seven, uh, eight, nine years uh, until this is in parity. But in terms of sort of cultural uh, uh, unity and uh, uh, political unity. Again, Angela Merkel is a very good sign for this. Uh, I think uh, Germany has come a very long way indeed. We're watching in the pictures Berlin. come out of Berlin right now. A very rainy evening. I'm pretty sure it's quite cold being mid-November in Berlin. And yet thousands of people have turned out. Okay, there's a lot of uh, world leaders. But why do you think those people have turned out? We've seen quite young kids who don't remember the war, weren't alive when the war was built um, or indeed taken down. So why do you think they're there? Well, there's one thing, uh, being a German and uh, commemorating uh, unification, but there's another thing, quite another thing, being a Berliner and uh, commemorating the 20th anniversary of the fall of the Berlin Wall. Berlin was a city that was incredibly scarred by this wall, and uh, that really is very much ingrained in the psyche of Berliners up until this day. Well, here in the studio, um, with us, we have Henning Meyer from the European Program at the Global Policy Institute. Henning Meyer, while we wait for those dominoes um, to go quite soon, tell me what you thought of Angela Merkel's speech. Well, I think what all the leaders that we've just listened to uh, did very nicely is put the, the moment, the commemoration today, into an historical but also in a, into a future context. They reminded uh, that the, the build-up to the fall of the Berlin Wall uh, was was take, it take, took a long time. It started basically in Germany with Willy Brandt's Ostpolitik in the 70s, went on with Helmut Kohl politics. Obviously, there was uh, the, the movement in Eastern Germany itself. Um, so they, they commemorated all of these different puzzle pieces, if you wish, that all contributed to the wall coming down in November 89. But also, uh, and that I think was uh, very, very clearly uh, represented in the speech of Gordon Brown but also Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton is the message of hope that uh, basically if you organize people uh, simultaneously if there is a desire for freedom is if there is a desire to uh, surmount seemingly insurmountable obstacles it can be done and this is the message I think uh, or the kind of vitality that these leaders want to uh, draw from these commemorations uh, and transfer them into the political problems we have in these days. Indeed, well, Gordon Brown mentioned other issues in Darfur, Zimbabwe, Burma, and Myanmar. Hillary, Hillary Clinton did as well in a roundabout um, way. Dmitry Medvedev was interesting, obviously, his role there as a representative 
of uh, Russia is quite interesting. Um, he said that even though countries like East Germany and the USSR no longer existed, the people still existed. He spoke of respect and uh, courage, and he said that he hoped there would be that a period of confrontation was in the past. I mean, we're also seeing relations between so-called East and West, let's say, between the US and Russia um, come in a new phase, a sort of reset button that's been pushed. Do you think that the leaders also were talking about that as they were talking about the Berlin Wall? Uh, yes, but it, this is still a very real problem. I mean, if you look at the recent elections in Germany and in Brandenburg that was mentioned, um, there is now a new red-red coalition and there again is the talk. Uh, can you really integrate people who have been tainted one way or the other in the, in the former Eastern, Eastern German system uh, into a political process in a unified Germany. Uh, this is still a debate that is led um, uh, up until this day and um, uh, it is very much, this moment is very much uh, the question mark is can we put this now behind us, can we now look into the future 20 years after this happened or do we still have uh, to tackle these sort of problems. Um, and that's uh, in the inner German scale, but obviously in the broader scale, uh, you, have, you have a similar issue uh, with the rejuvenated Russia as well. Sure. Um, having a leader in Germany who actually comes from what used to be East Germany, does that help in reunification? Well, yeah, it shows, uh, it, it shows that um, there is no barrier uh, to uh, people, at least in, po in politics, and people from former Eastern Germany uh, uh, to rise to the highest offices. Um, as Barack Obama also said, who would have thought 20 years ago uh, that there would be an Eastern German woman leading uh, Germany and, uh, and an African uh, and a president of African descent uh, being the president of the United States. So this is again the message of hope. It can be done if, if you put your mind to it. Indeed. Well, Henning Meyer will come back to you in a second. Well, we still have Henning Meyer in the studio with us. He's head of the European program at the Global Policy Institute here in London. Henning Meyer, how do you think the people of Berlin, of what used to be East and West Berlin, are living this day? How do you think they feel? Well, I feel they, uh, they probably feel relieved and they, they um, feel probably a big sense of achievement as well because uh, Berlin is still the, very much the symbol uh, for where the Cold War uh, uh, stopped. But uh, as, as, as your colleague pointed out uh, very correctly, one has to remember that Berlin was basically, the, the fall of the war was the culmination of a process that started above all in Leipzig, uh, where the Monday demonstrations uh, really gave uh, the disenfranchised Eastern German people a voice and where more and more people gathered for peaceful protest and eventually even uh, in Leipzig, just after, shortly after the 40th anniversary of the GDR, basically defeated the system with 70,000 people peacefully marching in the streets. So this was the, really the origin of this. There was a very interesting poll, because I mean, we heard there Angela Merkel, all the other leaders speak about a reunified Berlin, a reunified Germany, and how that gave hope to the rest of the world. And yet there's been a poll in a, in a German newspaper that shows that one in eight people who were questioned, in fairness, it was just a thousand people, but one in eight actually wanted the wall rebuilt, and not everyone saw it as the great success that certainly all the leaders hailed it as. Well, what do you make of that? Why do some people in Germany not see reunification as having delivered all that it promised? Well, people, if, if change happens, uh, there, there's always transformation, and transformation is always a good scapegoat for all sorts of things that might go wrong in people's lives. But it is years on, I mean, you'd think things would have settled by now. Well, first of all, I mean, not all things have settled. I mean, I mentioned earlier the uh, economic situation. It's vastly improved, uh, but obviously it were not the blooming landscapes that then Chancellor Hammond Kohl promised uh, just a few years after unification. 